At the end of the lesson, you are expected to identify a Jacobian matrix, determine the implication of the second derivative, and appreciate the significance of a Jacobian matrix in deep learning. In some cases, we are interested in identifying the partial derivatives of a certain function. So to do this, we are going to use Jacobian matrix. I believe you are already familiar with a Jacobian matrix and even with its calculation. But nevertheless, um, it's, it's still worthwhile to define it here. So before we continue, don't forget to click the subscribe button below and the notification bell to receive updates of our machine learning, deep learning, and natural language processing courses. So the Jacobian matrix, I think I need to write here the Jacobian. Jacobian. Okay. So the Jacobian matrix is a matrix of partial derivatives of the functions. So mathematically, it is written as this. We have J, which means Jacobian. J, I, J is equal to, we have here, the derivative over the derivative of X, I, or J, then F, X, I. So if we're going to look at this expression, it may seem so confusing especially if it's your first time what does it mean right it, it may be mind-boggling or what I mean is it's difficult okay so to best explain this formula let's have this as an example so we have J is equal to this elements we have partial derivative of f1 over partial derivative of x i so or we can also say that the partial derivative of f1 given the partial derivative of xi. So as you could see here, these are all f1. And here we have xi, or I mean x1, this is x1, x1, x2, and then x3. Okay? And also at the bottom, we could see here that there is f2. So this is the partial derivative or derivative of f2 with respect to x1. Then we have x2 and then x3. So this is an example of a Jacobian matrix. So here we can see two functions. So as what I've said, we have f1 for this row. And then we have f2 for this row. So here there are three. Okay, We have three shared variables. So these variables are x1 x2 then we have x3 so the first row or the top row is a set of partial derivatives of f1 with respect to its variables x1 x2 and then x3 similarly the second row the bottom row is the set of partial derivatives of f2 with respect to three variables. Okay, so if a Jacobian matrix has only one function, just like for example, we only have F1. Okay, so just like for example, again, we only have F1 or one row only. So it is expected that there is only one row of partial derivatives. And so because there is only one row, it is the gradient of the function. So this is the situation actually um, of the first derivative. And if we would like to understand the real situation, and if we would like to understand where we're we going, what kind of decision we're we going to make, are we going to decrease or increase the learning rate? So remember our learning rate? So we discussed that in our previous lessons. So I'm going to provide the description in the, the I mean the, the link in the description below. So you would be able to, or you can go back to lesson 18 for you to be able to understand clearly and significantly our lesson. Okay. So again, 
um, if we would like to understand the real situation, we want to go deeper, I mean deeper, and we're going to search wider about our data. So what is this? What does this mean? So we may as well would like to understand the second derivative, okay? So this expression, this one, tells us all about it. So after taking the first derivative, so let me draw a line. Okay, so this is our first step, right? Now, after our first step, because we would like to know more about the situation, then we, we're going to understand the second derivative and how to do that. So this expression tells us all about it. So what does this mean? So this is the derivative with respect to xi of the derivative of f with respect to xj. So this is the case of having two dimensions. So when we say two dimensions, we have um, two functions. So if we only have a simple dimension, for example, we have only one dimension, then we can have this. So we have the partial derivative or the, the second partial derivative over or with respect to the partial derivative of x of the function f. Okay, so we won't go into the step-by-step -step process of the computation or calculation. There, there are actually a lot of um, tutorials here that can teach you about the step-by-step -step computation. So what we'll deal with in this lesson is that the importance and the implication of the partial derivatives, I mean the second partial derivatives. Okay, so the second derivative is very important in the sense that it provides a picture of how the first derivative will change if we change the output. So another thing about its significance is that it tells whether a gradient step will make an improvement as expected. So this is only based on the gradient. So in other words, we can say that the second is a measuring curvature, this one. Again, we can say that the second is a measuring curvature. So in other words, if we have this, we can gauge or we can identify, we can describe what is wrong with this data. Are we doing good or are we doing bad? Are we going to make some kind of adjustments with respect to our learning rate? What? Okay. So measuring curvature is described by this or these illustrations. So we have illustration one, we have illustration two, then we have illustration three. So our illustration one is negative. Our number two is none. So it means there is no, it's not negative, it's not positive, and our illustration three is positive. Okay, let me write curvature. Okay, so you can see clearly. Curvature. Okay, so that's uh, measuring curvature. Okay, so what does each illustration mean? So the situation here is we have a quadratic function. I want to point out that most often in, in practice though, many functions are not quadratic, but they can be approximated as quadratic. <clears throat> so here you can see dashed lines. So we have in number one and we have in number three. What does this tell us? So these lines here tell us that the value of the cost function, which we expect noting the fact that the gradient information is already available. So when was it available? So it was available during this, during this stage, okay, because 
we did our first first jump right i mean um first first step but then because we would like to know more about our step then we get the partial second partial derivative okay so this is so because we have already made a step downhill doing our first derivative so now we're going to have one by one so let's have the negative curvature so what is in here so as you can see the curve is downward so it starts from here it, it actually it actually goes up for a little while then it goes down okay so this is or this in effect or this dec uh, decree this decreases the cost function more than what the gradient predicts again let me repeat that for this kind of situation so this is in effect decreases the cost of function more than what the gradient predicts so remember our prediction so we had that in our previous lesson because we did our um, linear regression simple linear regression okay so these are actually um, used if you would like to make some kind of predictions and how or how big or how small the step should be taken okay so please review that or please go back to that lesson so what if there is no curvature just like for example we have here in number two what does it mean so it means that a function has a second derivative of zero so we can see here a flat line so you could you could see that there is no curve just flat from this point or from this point going to this point okay so this means that our gradient predicts the decrease correctly again there is a correct prediction of the gradient um, uh, I mean the, the 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 decrease so it means that it's good so from this very first stage or first step when the result of our partial second partial derivative is this then it's perfect then of course you can save your time you can save your money you can save your energy so let's go to number three so in our third scenario we can see a positive curvature why positive okay it first starts to go down but eventually it goes up right from this point then it goes up okay so although the curve is going upward it means i mean uh, i mean the curve is going upward as what i've said okay so it means that the cost function decreases lower than expected and then it eventually increases so with this we can say that if we utilize a large learning rate it can cause inadvertent increase in the cost function because this may result to overshoot what is this for why do we have to study this a jacobian matrix is used to transform the infinitesimal vectors from one coordinate system to another it is used in calculating neural network gradient after all being said and done let's try this what is a jacobian matrix how does it affect a certain function why is it significant in deep learning please leave your answers in the comment below so we would be able to, to exchange ideas for a very rich discussion and you and I can learn from each other. Do not forget to subscribe, like, and share. Please click the bell button to be notified every time we have a new session. See you in the next lesson.